Hey everyone, it's Mariam, and I have the absolute pleasure of interviewing some of the cast and crew behind Sweet River, the magnificent film that you all just got to watch. So if I may welcome to the virtual stage, Justin McMillan, Ash McLeod, Lise Kay, and Martin Sachs. Welcome, happy to have you here. Hi, my name's Justin McMillan. I am the director of the film Sweet River. Thanks for having me. G'day, I'm Ash McLeod, producer of Sweet River. Hi, my name's Lisa Kay and I play Hannah in Sweet River. Hello, I'm Marty Sachs and I play John Drake. Justin, my first question goes to you. Obviously the film deals very much with not just a mother's but a parent's loss of a child in the morning. Is there something in particular you wanted us to take away from this film? To be honest, the the film, you know, obviously it's it it's 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 a film about grief and it's about how two mothers approached, um, you know, the loss of, of of their individual children from different sides of grief, and obviously the the, the twist in there is that is that um, through through a, a turn of events, um, one, one of the mothers still has access to her child, which is, you know, a, a really sort of, you know, I guess weird and, and, and um, interesting and awkward uh, way of keeping like a, a child held in, in, a, in a purgatory state um, that you're visiting for your own personal kind of, I guess inability to be able to deal with the fact that 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 accident has happened and that person is gone, uh, and then you have uh, Lisa's character on the other side of the fence who has literally had a child literally you know taken away from her, um, and she has dealt with it uh, in in a in a in a really hard way, and and taken it head on and and used you know her own um, sort of fallback mechanisms of, you know, drugs and alcohol and things like that to, to deal with the pain, but then, then found herself needing to come full circle and, um, and, and do honest, you know, do honest, honesty to herself and justice to her, her child and, and give him a proper burial. And, and that is her motivation. So they're two really powerful uh, positions for each mother to, to be in. And, and I, I don't know, I, I just thought that was really key ingredients for, for a really strong story because, um, you know, it, you know, being a father of three, it, 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 it's for me, it's, it's, it's probably the one, you know, children are the one thing in, in your life that you would do absolutely anything for if you were put to the test. And if, and, and if the challenge was laid down for you. And um, that for me was, was, was a really strong um, thematical foundation for the film because, you know, when I first spoke to Ashley about, you know, a lot of the properties around this genre, I always struggled with why, why people stayed in the fight and why they stayed in this horrible environment or why they stayed in, 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 in harm's way. And, you know, persecution's way and, 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 you know, ultimately like true danger's way, they could just get in their car and leave at any point or just, just get out of that situation. Um, but when you, when you have a really strong um, purpose, um, like Lisa's mission and finding her child and um, <clears throat> Eleanor's mission as in protecting that visitation um, scenario that she had set up with, the other mothers with 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 the, their children in the cane. Um, both of those two things are really strong things that neither mama, mother would let go, and 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 both wanted to fight for and keep. And um, and and I think soon as those foundations were set in the development of the story, I, I think that's when we were kind of like, okay, we've got something here, and um, you know, all of the actors anchored to that theme had something to stake a, a, a flag in the ground and kind of go, okay, well, I know where I'm at and I know what I do and I, I know how I can play this role the way that I would do it. And then each, each character took ownership, um, you know, of that role and, and brought their, their lovely, um, you know, thing, you know, little, little idiosyncrasies and, and thoughts and, 
and um, processes to to the those character developments um, during pre and, and during the whole shoot. We didn't have a lot of time for any pre really, so we were. Um, it was just a really fun, creative journey in that way, and and I think if if that foundation wasn't there, uh, it would have been a tricky process in the film because we would have kind of found so many holes in it and maybe and maybe discovered it wasn't really <laughs> worth telling. Uh, but it, it turns out that um, that it was, and and we was and I was I was really fortunate as a first time filmmaker to have such great actors around me to um, yeah to to just basically execute the, their vision of, of those individual roles. And, and, and that was truly magical to, to watch that translate from the page to, to the screen. Um, most of the time with like 15 minutes blocking prior to a scene and that's all we'd had on it uh, at all. Ash, my next question is for you. Looking at the environment, this wild nature it's very chaotic we very much get lost in it but tell us a little bit about how that environment works with the story and perhaps what the practical side of things was when working or producing in an environment like this look it's a great question the 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 location the location of um sweet river was almost a character in itself um you know it was uh leveraging the ausploitation angle that that has been a well-trodden road in in Australian film, but really I, the credit has to go to to Justin. Um, the 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 biggest restriction on this film was was the budget and the time, and he had to use his disadvantage to turn it into an advantage, which which ultimately was driven by the location. Um, so the the location from from some of the parameters that I. I boxed Justin into, had to be within about half an hour, 40 minutes from Byron Bay, where we both live um, from a budget level. And when, when Justin found this area, which is the Tweed Valley, it, it really had that ominous feel to it, which uh, worked with the context of the film um, and it gave it scale. Um, it was also shaped around the final climatic scene. Um, the, the location really was decided around the final climatic scene of burning the cane field. And that gave us the production value. So it gave us the scale. Scale, however, doesn't work when you're trying to shoot a film quickly with not a lot of money. So we needed the intimacy, which then allowed Justin to get in amongst those cane fields and in amongst the, the houses. And by having the two houses next to each other, Hannah and Eleanor's house and John Drake's house to travel between the two of them, it gave it a really nice um, uh, geographical landscape to work with on the budget, um, but yet maintaining production value scale and intimacy of the drama. Lisa, my next question is for you. Um, whilst watching the film, we as the audience see fairly early on that something about this film is supernatural, something about the threat is supernatural, but watching your character, she doesn't seem to understand that she's in a ghost movie as early as we do. Why did you choose to play her the way you did? The writing, the way that um, uh, the, the script was that she, even though she did see, as you say, the ghost children and things like that she yes she was so focused on finding her kid but also there were a lot of it where she didn't know really what she saw like when the boy Max is in her house and she comes um uh to John to get help and she, you know she's she's confused she doesn't she's woken in the middle of the night a lot of the time do you know what I mean so she doesn't really know wh what she saw was real or or just a figment of her imagination or, or what, because everyone around her is telling her that it's nonsense and there's, there's nothing to worry about and this, that and the other. And, um, but I think she's, um, I think when in life, when you see things that maybe could be construed as something, I don't know, a bit weird or supernatural, your just your logic overtakes, doesn't it? Of, well, no, that's, you know, of course, it's, there's an explanation for it. It's something 
logical at the end of the day. I don't think just because, I don't know, I see often a lot of horror movies where, or supernatural things where they accept it very quickly that that is real. And I don't think we do as humans. I think we always have a logical or find a logical explanation to things rather than immediately go, oh yes, of course, it's ghosts, it's ghost children, and they're all alive in this field. You know, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think that's where our brain goes to. It's almost like a survival thing, whereas, you know, there, there has to be a, a logical reason for what's happening. And the things that she saw, you know, like the children in the cornfield, you know, they were to her just children in the cornfield and then they, they vanished, where did they, go but they could have quite as easily just run off you know just because they disappeared I think there in her mind she she um found a logical reasoning to to the things that happened around her and uh, and again her focus was on finding her what had happened to her son and uh, the characters around her were you know very convincing that this, everything was fine and normal. What are you talking about now, Led Rabbit? Yeah. Martin, your character is very much a tortured soul. Whilst we understand what he's going through with his wife and the loss of his child early on, it's not until much later in the film that we realize the scope of where his mourning and where his guilt may come from. Where did you, when preparing this character, becoming this character, find any motivation to keep going at all? I, I think um, like, like any character, it has to be anchored in, in a real sense of reality. And like what Juzzy said, for me, um, I like to keep things very simple and very anchored and very um, based in a, in a certain level of truth. So even though we were in this world of the supernatural and other things, for me, the, the one thing that, I, as I said to Jazzy earlier on, I could anchor myself to was the fact that he's lost children, he's lost his wife to mental illness, and he's pretty much losing his own mind. So his main objective is, is to keep it together for everybody else. So my journey was, even though it, <laughs> he was tortured, was a fairly clear journey um, in terms of my approach to it. And, and also, you know, being able to work with such a fine young woman as Lisa helps a lot when you're actually acting opposite somebody. And, you know, and Juzzy creates an, a world and an atmosphere where we're able to work together and to create a, a, a place of safety and where we can take risks and, and uh, work quickly, but be well prepared, hopefully beforehand. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the torture or, or what he what was going through was really just based on what would it be like if you were in that situation. I didn't really have to create too much. I just had to dive into the script and just break the script down and say, if I was this person living in this situation, how would I respond? So it was in the script. And then we had Jazzy guiding us along the way. And then I had to look at the lovely Lisa in terms of the acting. So everything takes care of itself. The more we understand about the production process behind independent films, the more we realize what kind of a, an accomplishment and achievement that really is. What does it mean to you to see your film run at film festivals all over the globe? What has the production process taught you about filmmaking? I think we're, we're really honored uh, first and foremost to, to be accepted into, um, this particular festival and, and any of the festivals that the film's been recognised, um, you know, as being a, a worthy competitor for, it's, you know, we, we started this process as, as a couple of, uh, you know, storytellers that have been confined in a commercial market for so long and it's been a, you know, an internal dream to tell a, a, a long form story, uh, you know, to make a feature film and, they're really hard, you know, they're, they're hard to get off the ground. Um, it's hard to find a story A worth telling. It's hard to find actors that are, you know, are interested, are available. It's hard to find a producer that's 
willing to to take risks and 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 put money on the line and and all those things but you know I, looking back now i think the struggle for me is is like the fact that like i want to do this every day i mean i i just want to go from project to project to project and it, it's just so it's just so hard to um you know it's like being given the best drug in the world and then told you that you can't have it anymore <laughs> for a while um, so I don't know like I, I'm 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 so so excited that um, that the the project um, turned out the way that it did with with the, considering you know the 17 day shoot period that we had to do it in um, I mean I didn't realize how tough that was going to be un, until we sort of stepped into day one or two and um, it truly was a baptism of fire for me. Um, and yeah, I just want to say thanks to Ash, Marty and Lisa for sticking it out with me and, um, and bringing your A game um, because. I think, and just that's awesome. I think that, you know, thank you so much. And I, I, I think I read somewhere that the greatest film school is just do it. Mm. And 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 you did it. We did it. You know, we 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 got a bunch of us together, and um, we we put our uh, we put our hearts and souls on the line, and we made a great film. It's something that I think we're all really proud of, and I'm so glad it's travelling the world and and doing so well um, for all of us. I, I have to agree. If I can just pipe up for one second, because you know, a screenplay is not a film, and uh, there's a lot of screenplays in death stores everywhere, but. Ash, Juz, Lisa, the team made a film and making a low budget film. And I'm and just hearing 17 days when I think about I the result. I can't of believe what, we did that. What the company, the team got in 17 days is mind blowing because I've had experience in other things and, and you know, to get the same quality and, and commitment and love. And, you know, it's like joining the circus. You know, they say, you want to come on this? And uh, invariably, a low-budget film is, or low-budget films should be supported. And may long they live after what we've just been through, because you know they're the most beautiful things for people to go to the cinema to enjoy, because it exposes the human condition, it illuminates the human condition, and people get things from it. And um, I, I really, I'm, I'm very touched to be part of it, and you know, to be part of something like this film and also appreciative for people in the film festival world to actually recognize it and recognize Ash and, and Juzzy and, and Lise who yeah. carry the film all on our own, pretty much every scene. And we just pop in and do our little, our, our tap dance, but you know, that Hardly was pop, Lisa, darling. But you know, I mean, I think <laughs> that, you know, low budget independent films are where my heart are, uh, is and um, and I just I'm so delighted that that Jazz and Nash got it together and and they're going to go on and do a lot more because I know Lisa and I said said they smashed it. I'd like to say also just everything that Martin has said. Yeah, I I mirror and also just our crew were just fantastic. We were so lucky, mm. so lucky to have such fantastic crew. Um, yeah. it was just. It, everyone became a family. It was um, just a bunch of mates just doing the best they could with 17 mm. days. And it was, yeah, <laughs> everyone just yeah. put blood, sweat and tears into it. And I think that's yeah. something that you don't often experience, you know, because mm -hmm. um, I, I think it became a very organic process as well because of that, because people were just up against it and just going, oh, okay. We, I remember one day we, we turned up on set. I think it was in my house and Justin went, right, so we can't actually do what's on the page in this location. So um, ideas, anyone? <laughs> and then people go, oh, if you're, I could do this. Oh, if you're going to do that, then I'll come around here and I'll shoot it from this way here. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. Well, okay. Well, how about we start it at the end of the scene and turn it around? And it, and it just became a real fun mm. Just, mm. it, yeah, it, it brought the creativity out in people, I think. So it just became apparent to me that when we were sort of blocking certain scenes and lighting certain scenes that I just wasn't going to get the coverage that I'd had planned. Like it just it just physically wasn't going to happen. So it just, inf 
it, that that just trickled back down the train to the actors and I was just kind of like no well you actually can't walk over there now because I can't light that I can't cover that back <laughs> like that's a 40 minute relight that I just don't have so it was it was just interesting to sort of work out okay you can't do that these are the restrictions that we have now placed in in front of us but how do we still make it how do we still keep the production level there how do we still make it cinematic how do we still make the film look like the aesthetic that we set up to and not just you know get all upset because we don't have the time um to do what we first thought was was what was required mm-hmm. and and what and what i learned through that and, and and the editing process is that i learned to make really tough decisions really quickly and i learned um to stand by those decisions and 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 you know realistically when i did get to the edit suite there was probably a scene or two that i would have loved a shot or two extra but ultimately the coverage was there and i didn't feel like those constrictions um, cheapen the film in any way. Well, that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much for being here and um, have a lovely day. Catch you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.